Hi, Elaine here from MarkerGeek.com. Today I'm colouring another older stamp from Stamping Bella. This is Macaron Bouquet. And I thought I would use this opportunity to talk to you a little bit about the benefits of using reference images. Um, even though we're colouring stamped images that are stylized and cartoonish, it can be beneficial when colouring something, especially if it's something you're not familiar with, or even if it is something that you're familiar with, it can be really useful to actually reference the object itself in real life or in a photo. Um, it can really add some extra interest in our colouring by helping us to pick out details that we maybe wouldn't have remembered or realised were there just from memory or imagination. Um, in this case, I went to Bing um, and searched for macarons. I'm not actually hugely familiar with macarons in um, real life. I've never actually eaten one. Um, apparently, I've been told I should, so maybe I will try that at the next opportunity. Um, so I looked up some photos and I printed them out uh, so that I could take them over to my colouring area. And I printed them out um, fairly large so that I could see the details. Obviously, the image that I'm colouring is quite stylized, um, So I wasn't looking to create a faithful, completely realistic depiction. Uh, I just wanted to be able to pick out some details um, and add some suggestions of texture in that would add to um, my image, that would give it a sense of um, the real object, but um, without going too far, uh, especially since in this stamped image. It is a nice size stamped image. It is a decent size. There is plenty of area for colouring, but there are also limits to exactly how much you can achieve in that small space um, and how much it is sensible to try to do. And on this occasion, I had uh, stamped it with the black outline. Um, so I was kind of um, bound by the lines that the artist had created. My style does tend towards the um, more whimsical, the less um, realistic in any case. Uh, I just wanted to be able to add in some of those little details that would just really bring the image to life. When I've previously coloured this image um, and one of the other um, macaron images, the uptown girl Monique loves macarons, um, I've coloured it in a smoother look. Um, so kind of when colouring, as you can see here, I would leave it more at this um, with a little bit of texture in that kind of puffy area that you can see that I'm colouring now. Um, whereas I'm going to go a step further with this one and I think it really made all the difference. And without looking at the photos, either just online or by printing them off to really study them, without looking at those, it's a detail that I wouldn't necessarily have thought to add um, and certainly probably would have not carried it off quite as well as I end up doing if I hadn't referenced the images. I'm not um, copying the images or, or really um, using them faithfully, but it just gave me enough of a hint um, to be able to add those details in and have them work for the image. Using a reference image can also be really helpful in colour selection. Um, previously, I kind of struggled a little bit with these images um, in terms of picking out colours um, and kind of struggled to um, have those colours work uh, in a cohesive way um, without being boring or a little bit um, overly uh, vivid. Um, so I kind of never struck the balance really between the two. And I think both having the reference image for picking out some colours that worked really nicely and um, also adding in some, the, some of the shadow details, um, seeing how the objects sort of sit in the world um, and how those shadows fall, that really helps. Um, but also 
the extra little detail, the texture detail that will, I will add once I finish coloring them all in, um, adding the, the basic coloring down, um, really helps finish them off in a way that just makes the whole image so much more interesting. So without a photo reference, I probably wouldn't have chosen the color palette that I went with. Um, or if I had chosen to go with the green, the pink, um, and the sort of beige, I probably wouldn't have managed to get the tones quite right. Um, I have quite a lot of difficulty with softer tones, with kind of more pastel looking colours. I tend towards brighter colours or darker. Um, so I do tend to struggle with pastel tones. Um, so this was really, this was a really helpful exercise um, and reminded me why I should be using photo references more often even when I'm colouring something that is stylized and a bit cartoonish. And it's really nice just to shake things up a bit and do something slightly differently to how you would normally do it. Um, so yeah, sometimes it is really nice to just take that extra bit of time and really study something before you colour it. And I think the results speak for themselves, really. As you can see, I used a number of different um, red tones or pinks. Um, from different uh, blending groups. I often, as you may be aware um, from watching previous videos, I often mix and match um, colours from different colour families, blending groups, um, which is the beauty of working with alcohol markers like Copics um, because the inks will blend beautifully um, and you can use varying colours together. You don't have to stick within those natural sort of blending families. They do make it easier um, to if you stick within them when you're sort of learning and you're first getting to grips with using the markers. Um, but breaking out of just using, say, R43 with R46, um, mixing it up and using it as I've done here with RVs and also the R00 um, all together, also with the green as the um, base shadow colour for the underpainting. That really works beautifully and allows you to achieve so much more interest in your colouring. And referencing a photo of something will really help you with choosing those colours because you're really studying the tones of something, the, the, the colours, the, the tones and values within that image. Um, rather than just relying on your brain to tell you, well, it's pink and I want it to be a pretty sugary pink. Um, so you opt for just the RV21, RV25 or whatever, um, when actually you can make it so much more lifelike by breaking out of rigid colour families and bouncing around and, and picking more interesting tones to fit the image that you're looking at. Because I'm not really a pink person as such, um, I do tend to use it more often these days, but um, because I don't tend towards pinks, or at least this particular shade of pink, um, it's not a colour that I would have achieved just using my brain. Um, so I had to sit down with the photo reference and try out various different markers until I found um, a combination that seemed to blend well together and that resulted in a colour that I thought fit quite well and worked based on what I was looking at in the photo. It's not a exact reproduction but by using the photo, I was able to get to this point with a colour that I thought worked really well. Um, when in the past, when I've tried to colour sort of like a pastel version of this image, it just really hasn't come together quite as well as this. So tell me in the comments below, have you used photo references um, when colouring before? Is it something that you've tried? When you've tried it, did you enjoy it? Um, do you often use photo references? 
Um, or like me, do you tend to get a little bit lazy and um, just colour? Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve. And most of the time, no, I don't necessarily look up um, a photo. It just depends on what I'm going for. And I really wanted to push myself with this image because I really haven't been happy with how I've coloured it in the past. So maybe if there's an image that you're kind of stuck on where you're not happy with the results that you're getting, um, with what you've achieved in your colouring with it, maybe try looking up a photo reference and or several photo references and see what that does. See um, how that helps improve your colouring and sort of um, guide you to maybe getting some um, better results. In this case, I felt like it even really helped having um, the image with the particular order of the colours for the macarons, which sounds a bit silly, but um, I kind of feel like it worked so much better because I followed uh, one of the images that I found where I really liked um, the colours and specifically the way they were stacked. Um, with the green, then the pink, then the sort of neutral colour. Um, I don't think I necessarily would have chosen that order if I was just working from my own brain. Um, I might have put one of the darker colours on the bottom, um, but I think this worked so much better. Um, and without the photo, I wouldn't necessarily have got to this point. If you um, tend to be a little bit hesitant with uh, going darker and adding dark, deep shadows, using a photo reference may also be really helpful for you in terms of um, stepping outside of your comfort zone there and really adding in some darker tones. Um, if you've got the photo there to guide you and show you just how deep some of those shadows go and maybe sort of the uh, amount of shadow to add that might really help you in those circumstances in um, this image i possibly although i'm not really um one to shy away from adding in some really deep shadows uh, i possibly wouldn't have gone quite as dark with the um shadows under each of the macarons um, as i had done from looking at the photo here you can see is the um, the image that I originally coloured um, because I did do a test one of this before I decided to do the video. And here you can see um, where I'm looking at that texture detail that I'm going to add in. And it really is as simple as just adding some varying sizes of dots um, with one of the slightly darker tones. Um, but the image is really helpful um, because it kind of gives you the um, placement and kind of an idea of where to add them and the kind of sizes and the variation. Um, you don't want to make them look like they've got measles, um, but you just want to add enough in that gives the suggestion of that texture of those little air bubbles. Um, and the size and sort of shape and making them a little bit varied um, and natural looking really helps so that it doesn't just look like you've added some spotty detail, some sort of like polka dots. Um, so yeah, you can see on the green one specifically, I've added in quite a large air pocket and kind of made it a little bit irregularly shaped. And then some of them are just really teeny tiny dots with the very, very tip of that marker. Uh, and I think personally that it really makes all the difference with this image. Um, and now I'm just deepening up some of the um, shading on the um, filling in the middle. And then when I'm finished adding the ground shading in, I'm going to tackle the ribbon. And this was another thing I wanted to talk about in this video. Previously, I have done um, a video talking about creating a sparkly sequin effect using glitter pens and white gel pen on top of a Copic or pencil colored image. You can also achieve a similar effect without the glitter pens, and it's really easy to do. 
So I wanted to create the look of some glittery gold ribbon. I thought it would be fun to have some texture rather than colouring that ribbon in perfectly smooth and shiny like a satin ribbon. I'd seen some photos, again, referencing photos. I'd seen some photos of the macarons tied up with um, glittery ribbon. So that's what I went with. And all I'm doing is um, adding the base coat of my lightest shade, that Y15, and then using a dotting technique to um, add the darker colours. This is my darkest colour, the uh, E47, uh, and then the YR23 over the top of that, and just building up this sort of stippling technique um, to give the appearance of texture. And this again is the beauty of looking at photo references. Um, it reminds us that while um, smooth Copic blends can be really satisfying and I love um, creating a smooth blend, um, but things in real life have texture. And so sometimes a smooth, perfect blend isn't necessarily the most appropriate way to represent something. And so using this technique helps you to build up that texture. And at this point, it doesn't look particularly glittery. Um, it just looks a bit textured. Um, and that's where the white gel pen will come into play in a minute. Um, I'm going to skip over most of the colouring in a second now that I've shown you how I'm doing it. And then that white gel pen will come out. Um, and adding in spots of the white gel pen in the highlight areas and then a few little tiny spots here and there in some of the darker areas will give you the effect of um, the glittery ribbon reflecting in the light and that gives you the glittery ribbon effect without using any glitter pens and you could apply this to dresses or anything really um, if you didn't want to use glitter pens um, so that you can achieve that look and it's quite effective it works really well um, and I think it really finished this image off quite nicely uh, I thought it would just be useful to talk about that quickly at the end here and that's really it um, so thank you for joining me today I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful listening to me waffle on um, about photo references <laughs> Um, do let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed this. Um, if you have, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And uh, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. All the information about products used, the stamp, etc., links to all of that will be in my blog post. And you can find the link to that in the description below. Catch you next time.